Hey skinnies, you're in for a treat. One of the skinny America dishes that I love is General So's chicken. Now, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, but hey, we've all got our own way. In fact, this dish has so many different origins, but my favorite story for this dish is the guy from New York who came from Hunanese province. Uh, his name, probably the best name for a chef ever, his name is T.T. Wang. I mean, I just pronounce it T.T. Wang, but that's just me. So the idea behind this dish is it's typically deep fried. Now, being skinny and skinny America, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this chicken off in a light fry, just using this little hex clad induction cooker. Just make sure I've got some heat in there. It just shows you how versatile it is. But instead of going with like a heavy batter, we've gone with a really nice light seasoning. Just kind of fry off this chicken. I've fried up a little bit of the chicken already, you know, to speed things up with the power of the camera. And now all I'm gonna do is gently stir this chicken through until it's about three quarters of the way cooked. This particular dish is a kind of combination between something they call orange chicken and another thing they call General So. General So himself is apparently renowned Chinese general from back in the day, um, one of the dynasties. I couldn't tell you which one, I'm not a historian. But his passion for food has created this very sweet, savory, kind of sour dish. The perfect balance, and it's very similar to orange chicken. In fact, we use, as part of the sauce, orange juice. So we get a bit of the combination of the spice from the chilies, a little bit of that citrus, and overall, it is the perfect dish to be served with either fresh vegetables or some rice and noodles, if you're so way inclined. So you can see that's browning off a little bit there in my little handy induction cooker. But you can cook it over gas, you can cook it over a fryer. Heck, you can probably cook this any way you wanted. Air fryer would work as well. Once I've got that started to cook off, I'm just gonna add in some vegetables. I'm just gonna set that chicken aside once it's brown. I might use my little scooper. Makes life a little bit easier for me. Drain off a bit of that oil. These hex clouds are really good too. I don't know if you've ever seen one before, but it's a non-stick and I can still use metal things on the surface. All right. Next I'm gonna do the broccoli first. Nice little bite-sized pieces. Give that a bit of a mix around. When you're cooking vegetables in the wok, you gotta make sure your heat's up to a certain level where they're gonna cook, get a little sear but the moisture in them, you want them to come out, so the vegetables stay fairly crisp, but they cook evenly. So I always start with broccoli first, because it's the biggest and thickest of the bunch. If you ever want to speed this up, a handy little trick is to just grab a nice little pan or cover, and you can throw that on top of that. It gives a little bit of a steaming function, but it's not necessary if you want an authentic wok sort of flavor. Once these have started to go that sort of lighter green that we expect, a nice cooked vegetable. I like to give them a few minutes. For the purpose of this video, I'll probably throw my other vegetables in. For me, I've gone some pretty basic vegetables. Snow peas and some chopped up capsicum, peppers, as our American friends like to say. I do like to try and work out, you know, which ones of those vegetables I get correct. There's the uh, cilantro versus the curry. And then there's obviously the peppers versus capsicum. And um, my, my favorite that I've talked about once before is um, what we call rocket and they call arugula. <laughs> Just makes me sound like I'm honky at one of my friends. Arugula. All right, so you can see that beautiful and green. They're gonna cook through. I want them to go for a few minutes on a nice high heat. Again, if we wanted to speed that up for hungry kids, throw a lid on it and cook them through nice and evenly. Getting that sear through those. Once I'm happy that that's kind of cooking through nicely, it's just a matter of adding back in my chicken. Three quarters cooked. Cleaning up as I go so Mez has less to do in the kitchen afterwards to clean up. On the induction it means I don't get to do the old wok toss, but it's okay. It works a treat still. Very handy, but it is a bit of a cheat given I've got the massive gas cooker behind me. This makes it easier for filming, right? Okay, so that's cooking through there nicely, letting that heat kind of 
sink through everything. And last but not least is something we created using the Thermomix. You can do it conventionally. I just find the Thermomix a little bit easier to create the sauce. This is where we're going to get all that general sauce flavour. So this is rice wine vinegar. It's going to have hoisin sauce. We've got soy sauce in here. Um, and also the all important um, orange juice. Obviously with a bit of chilli in there that you can see. I'm going to pour that sucker all the way through it. That's giving me that gloss and that glaze that I want. Beautiful. Now, despite it having an Asian background, Chinese origin, obviously this is made most famous in New York, and that's why it crept into the book. Sticking to that idea that American cooking isn't just one dimensional, it includes a whole host of different cultures and countries coming together to create, you know, what we know affectionately as American cooking. Now I'm just gonna roll that through. You can start to hear that sizzle, start to see that shine. And that, once it starts to get a little bit of a burn on, it coats all of our vegetables correctly. We'll sit for a few minutes in that sauce, let it set up, and it'll be one of the best skinny American slash Chinese dishes you're ever gonna feed your family. Say goodbye to General Tso's Fast Food and a load of Skinny America, General Tso's Chicken.